What is cool and what is going on? We've got the New Orleans Saints today. And oh, look up in the sky. No, different day. That was yesterday. But hope you guys are having a really good day. We're going to go ahead and march right in. So let's start with the free agent signings. And Nathan Peterman competes in the room with Jake Keener as a backup. That's fine. One year deal. Cedric Wilson, that vet in, in, the, in the wide receiving core, they're really thin right now. So I don't mind that signing. Two year deal pretty cheap. Stanley Morgan, good special teams capability. Ole Uda as a swing tackle. Also trying to fill that void from Calvin Throckmorton. He can also play on the interior. So I don't mind that. They kept it pretty simple on offense. Defensively, this is where they look to get a little bit more aggressive with the money that they don't have. Chase Young, one year basically fully guaranteed. They need edge help. They need somebody that can get after the quarterback. So I understand why they did this, right? Chase Young has that elite potential. Like it's still there. The talent is with Young. I don't know what's going on the the motor's not been quite there with with chase young hopefully he gets fully healthy ready to go for next season they definitely need him in this edge rushing room and then they brought in willie gay and Khalid cuts into an already strong linebacking core room pete warner and demario davis so now you get willie gay and Khalid hudson in this room hudson's probably more of a special team rotational player but gay Warner and Davis. That's a really nice linebacking core. So I like that signing. $3 million, too. Not super expensive. I think his coverage and blitzing skills are going to really help them out. Uga Amadi, good backup slot corner DB to have in your room. Let's go on to the roster needs portion. And starting off with this offensive line and Clint Kubiak coming over here as the new OC. Going to bring that Shanahan tree and obviously his dad, Gary Kubiak. I think it's going to be a good fit for them in, in Derek Carr. Nonetheless, needs on the offensive line. They need help at tackle. It is the number one priority for me on this roster right now is they need to make sure that this tackle situation is in a better position than it was, especially at the beginning of last season. It was really, really bad. And one of the reasons why they were struggling so heavily was the amount of pressure on Derek Carr's blind side. So hopefully Trevor Penning takes that year three jump like his teammate, former teammate Spencer Brown. There's a lot of talent with Trevor Penny like that's not we know he has the talent it's a matter of putting it together let's see if he can do it I don't want to guarantee that though I want to make sure we bring in competition because also Ryan Ramchek unfortunate in injury update from Dennis Allen saying that he may not play at all in 2024 that makes this even even bigger need. So I will be looking at tackle very early in this draft. And if we can draft a great tackle, then I'll, you know, if we have, if Ram Ramchek plays, then we'll figure it out, right? We can move Penning inside and compete with James Hurst at that left guard position. And that would be great. Okay. But tackle is a big need for me. Other than that, I mean, McCoy, Hurst, Ruiz, Salivarity, that's a solid interior. So I do feel confident about the interior. It's tackle. Wide receiver is also a relatively big need here. Rashid Shahid, um, he's a free agent after this season, so we'll see what type of payday he ends up getting, and he's definitely going to earn a payday, in my opinion. Chris Olave is your number one right now. Cedric Wilson, A.T. Perry competing for that third spot. The, the amount of depth that they have right now is concerning, so I will be looking at this wide receiving position relatively early. I think it could be a second-round need. I don't think it's a first-round need, but I do think it's a somewhat early need in this draft. Tight end, future type of need. Taysom Hill is under contract. Same thing with Foster Moreau. And both are capable. Obviously, Hill can do a jack-of-all-trades, play every position. Juwan Johnson. Thought he was going to have a little bit more of a breakout year last year. I, th I still see a lot of potential with Juwan Johnson. We'll see how he plays. This is like a late-round developing type of pick for me. Not an early need. It's wide receiver, in my opinion, is the priority here. Running back could be a future need. Alvin Kamara, I think this will be his last season as New Orleans Saint with that like $29 million cap. It more than likely will be cut. But that's okay. I think Kendrick Miller can step up. You have Jamal Williams still in a contract as well. So I'm not super worried about this running back room. It's a late pick UDFA type of need. And then we go on to the quarterback room. I know this is going to be a controversial one. It's like, what do you do with Derek Carr? Does he get you to a Super Bowl? It's hard to say, okay? I mean, I like Derek Carr. I really do. I'm root for the guy. I don't know if he's going to be that guy to elevate your roster, especially with where they're at right now. He can definitely get you into a 500 team. But once again, will he elevate your team? That's going to be the big question mark for this team and this organization. I just, I don't know where they're picking 
do you give up a ton of draft capital and they don't have a whole ton of draft capital these early draft picks so that is also a bit of the problem here Derek Carr is basically locked in for two more years under what they you know they just restructured him so next year's 50 million dollar cap it if they cut him they would lose that money so that is something to keep in mind there as well so I'm not going to be probably prioritizing this this year maybe it's more of a next year scenario at this point let's go on to the defense side of the ball and on the defensive line their edge position should be it hopefully will be better all right just got to stay healthy maybe Peyton Turner can get healthy too this year Isaiah Foskey year two you bring in Chase Young you call Carl Grenderson Cameron Jordan more as a rotational player at this point in his career They've got guys, so I'm not going to be looking at drafting anybody in your to go to Pascona as well as a good rotational interior and outside player. And then on the interior of the defense line, they need depth here, right? They need some more depth. I mean, Shepard, Saunders, and then you got Brian Brzee, who will probably step into more of a starting role this next season, or at least I would suspect. I think he's their best player in the room, but you need some depth, right? You definitely need some depth. And, and Shepard, to me, is a really nice situational pass rusher. I think Sanders, a nice early down player, but we need a little bit more help in this room. Let's go on to the linebacking core. This area should be good, okay? I mean, you could invest in this for the future because Willie Gay is on a one-year contract. Pete Warner is a free agent. Demario Davis getting a little bit older. They did restructure. He's under contract for the next couple of years. So I'm not going to prioritize, prioritize this too much. It could be something they prioritize. It's just not going to be what I'm prioritizing here. Cornerback, I will be looking at because Paulson Adebo is a free agent after the season. He's going to be getting a nice payday. And you know this cap situation for this New Orleans Saints team is tough. They always seem to work around it every single year. Marshawn Lattimore, I know they've, there were some trade rumors about him. Elante Taylor in the slot's good. You got Ugo Mane as well, some depth there. But on the outside, maybe a future developing corner. That is going to be the mold I look for here. Let's go on to the safety room. They just need a little bit of depth. I think the safety room is good, though, with Jordan Howden and Tyron Matthew. Uh, you got JT Gray and Jonathan Abram, but maybe bring in a fourth, fifth guy in that room. But it's that time. It is draft time. New Orleans Saints. First pick from me, J.C. Latham. Gotham Latham coming over to New Orleans. Huge J.C. Latham fan. I have a top 10 grade on J.C. Latham. He might be my number one tackle when it's all said and done. I think this guy has so much raw power. It is crazy, this guy, how strong and powerful of an anchor he has. And yes, his footwork, some people say, hey, you move him inside a guard. I think he's a tackle. I think he'll work with it. It, it can be a problem with some more speed guys, and that's something he's going to have to work on. Overall, I don't think it's a lack of athleticism. I do think he's athletic enough, and he could even drop 10 pounds. He's still going to be very strong. I think you, you need a right tackle potentially this year. And I also think J.C. Latham could play left tackle as well. I mean, from what he said, he says, hey, I'm comfortable on the left side as well. And I know maybe it's just talk, but overall, I'm drafting J.C. I'm drafting the best offensive tackle available. And to me, J.C. Latham is a stud. On to round number two, Ricky Pearsall. He just seems like a Hunter Renfro. I know that you're probably going to get a lot of comps of that, but man, he just seems like that type of dude. And, and you know, Derek Carr had a great connection with him. Ricky Pearsall, great route runner, strong hands, and he's going to be a dependable wide receiver for them and a dependable wide receiver three early on in his career. So get Derek Carr another weapon, Ricky Pearsall from Florida. Let's go on to round number five. DeCamrian Richardson from Mississippi State, a freak athlete, very, very raw as a coverage player, but he's got the length, he's got the crazy speed. If you can mold him and just say, hey, look, let's play man coverage, put you out on man coverage early on, let him develop his zone coverage feel and his overall route feel, his timing and stuff like that. He's just not very comfortable in zone at the moment, but he's a ferocious tackler. Could even be a safety, who knows? So you could have a combination there, but DeCamrian Richardson, freak athlete i'll bet on the traits and this team does play a good amount of man coverage joe woods did at least last season with this personnel let's go on here to our next pick keith randolph jr from illinois kind of gets overshadowed by Jerzon Newton and obviously Johnny Newton's a beast but Keith Randolph's a really good player and I think he's got a lot of developmental upside to his game good athleticism now I think he can work on his timing at the snap but you can see like he's got the lateral quickness and also the block destruction to be able to get after the quarterback and be a disruptive pass rusher or be disruptive in the run game now the big thing with me when I was really watching him in the offseason too was his lack of consistency it's still there he some games he'll be super dominant. Like, oh my gosh, this guy's a 
you know, day two pick. And then there's other games like this guy's a UDFA. So he needs to work on his overall consistency. The talent is there with Keith Randolph. So adding some more depth on the interior of this defensive line. Fifth round pick, I'm going Jaheim Bell. Maybe the future, I mean, it's hard to say Taysom Hill because Taysom Hill's different, but adding in another versatile tight end that is a yak machine, a uh, really nice athlete, and somebody that adds another weapon in for Derek Carr. He loves his tight ends, so I think Jaheim Bell would be another weapon for you in this game. And while he's not going to be the greatest run blocker, I do think he can be that piece, like I said, that Taysom Hill, putting the Wildcats, stuff like that. It'd be kind of a fun package. Jaheim Bell and Taysom Hill together, that'd be kind of fun. On to our final fifth round pick here, Garrett Greenfield from South Dakota State. He uh, played both tackle positions and just somebody that'd be a nice swing tackle for them. A developmental piece, gets stronger, definitely has the traits though, the talent, the athleticism, the length, the size, it's all there. And uh, they, again, Jack Rabbits, they do a great job coaching, a really big fan of that team. But Garrett Greenfield, just a little bit more swing tackle capability. On to round number six, Jaquan Jackson, Tulane, the green wave. And he's another dynamic threat to add into the offense. And of course, just in case you don't bring Rashid Shahid back, then you've got a guy who gives you some explosive element at the end of the draft. Obviously, depending on how much money Shahid wants on the contract, you know, with his contract, you got Paulson Adebo to pay and their cap situation was talked about. But Jaquan Jackson, another playmaker to add in with his deep threat capability. Obviously, the size concerns, he doesn't have a huge catch radius. Those are the big knocks and why he doesn't, you know, go earlier in the draft. Going to Omar Brown, Nebraska, safety slash slot corner for them. And he's just somebody that I think could be a nice backup behind Tyron Matthew. And that is kind of the mold that I'm looking at, maybe develop for a few years behind him and with Matthew getting a little bit older. And then final pick of the draft, Casey Rogers from Oregon. Somebody that watched this year, I'm like, hmm, this guy I feel like can make a roster, compete, make the team, and, and be a serious rotational player at some point in his career. So taking a chance on a guy like that, I like his length, I like his strength too. I, I think you can put him at nose tackle if you really want. I mean, obviously they're 4-3 team, but he can play one tech. He can rotate along that defensive line, give you a nice situational player, has enough quickness too, and I think his first step is, is overall solid. So just adding another interior player, adding a couple of interior players with Randolph and Rodgers onto that interior defense line of some depth. Let's go on to the roster though. After the draft, everything we've been able to do, what did we do? Well, offensive line, J.C. Latham. I love for J.C. Latham. A huge fan. He would be the day one starter for me because I think Ryan Rant, well, hey, we got to get the news update from News Flash. This just coming in, reporting live at G Sling News. I don't know. But anyway, depending on Ryan Ramchek's health, hopefully he is ready to go. And if he is, look, I'm moving JC Latham over to left tackle. I'm serious. And I'll try Trevor Penning at guard or I'll put somebody, I'll figure it out, right? They need offensive line help. They cannot have a re embarkment of what happened at last season. I don't know what I said, re embarkment. <laughs> That's a big word. But anyway, they cannot do it. Have a do-over from last season. No deja vu here, Denzel Washington. And then we also add in Garrett Greenfield as some more depth on that offensive tackle position. And then at wide receiver, we add in Ricky Pearsall to be that third guy. And there's options, of course, in that second round. Not that I don't think A.D. Perry can be a starter for them. I just really like the addition of Ricky Pierce, all that stability in the room that he's going to have with Derek Carr. I think it's just going to be a nice match made in heaven. Rashid Jaheed, Chris Olave, those are your three starters. You got Jaquindon Jackson has some more depth and special teams capability. A.T. Perry competing. Cedric Wilson, the veteran in the room. You got obviously Stanley Morgan, special teams capability as well. Overall, I feel confident we have enough weapons. We have enough depth. I feel good about the wide receiving core. And then we also added Jaheim Bell as another wildcat weapon and you know long-term tight end Taysom Hill who knows right and then uh running back we didn't do anything quarterback we didn't do anything maybe pick up some UDFAs defensively wise defensive line we had in two interior players I feel like the edge they're in a good spot but Keith Randolph Casey Rogers both I, I mean Rogers will be competing for a roster spot but I think there's a chance he, he could make it here and then Randolph definitely I, th I love his upside there on that interior defensive line don't add any linebackers but we do add some safety and cornerback help to Cameron Richardson as a nice developmental piece behind Paul Sanadipo if you're unable to re-sign him or if you trade Marshawn Lattimore getting some more help on that outside perimeter and then finally Omar, Omar Brown safety slash slot corner in that Tyron Matthew mold to be a nice backup for him for injuries in long term. So that is going to do it here for the New Orleans Saints. I'm marching in. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree. Why am I throwing my hands? Pop, 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 pop. Anyway, I hope you guys have a really good day. And my name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions. I'll talk to you later.